All right, Raptors lose uh, 100 to uh, 97. Um, or, 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 was it 97 or 93? Not 93. Oh, 93. Okay, sorry. Oh, it, it was 93. Okay, let me go back. We'll just cut that out there. Because I looked at it. I thought, it was nine, I thought they lost by three points. They lost by seven. Okay, cool. No, they lost by seven, I think. All right. What's up, guys? Um, Raptors lose another game, fall to 0 3. Uh, Toronto falls to the Philadelphia 76ers, 100 to 93. And uh, is, am I wrong to say it was it was ugly, Igor? Well, you know, like actually, for the most part, out of the game, it looked like several guys were getting out of position. Like Kyrie was getting out of position. Like Kyrie was getting out of Same, um, I don't remember off the top of my head who they played, but yeah, yeah losses. Yeah, off the top of my head, they're, they're, it's, all, um, it's all playoff, uh, playoff level teams, so they're, they're not playing um, bad teams to start the season. Um, just as uh, an overall factor, of, well, they played San Antonio, I don't know. That's right. Know. But he can't, the only thing, the only, I don't want to defend Boucher there only because like I, what I saw today, like Dwight Howard was covering him or, or you know, Dwight Howard was on the offense and, and Boucher was guarding him and just like, he's giving up way too much size there. Way oh, too much size. Absolutely. And, and with Embiid, uh -huh. Embiid's bigger than he is. Embiid's probably like 280. Or, or an 
and he was to get bounced in the first round. Truthfully, I'd rather tank. I'd rather tank to get a, a top-notch draft pick, shoot for the moon, and get a uh, try to get a legitimate star to start the franchise. Because as built, like well, let's be honest, they're not, they're not winning much, and and not because it's an always three situation, but even as a six seed, they're, they they would have to pull off uh, a good amount of upsets just to get what they need just to get it. And and the, and the conference has gotten a lot better. It was a lot faster the last few there, but to me, like if they end up being as terrible as the Golden State Warriors, I'm not gonna complain. Like they, they can use a top notch draft pick and, and and then a rebound because the teams the teams are like Kyle getting old. The team needs to getting you know, or it needs to reshape soon anyways. But uh, I'll pass it along to you and get your thoughts. Well, I, like I just made some notes on on the game as I was watching a bit of it. Like Pascal played a bit. I'll just go through some of the guys that stood out. So Kyle had twenty four, eight and nine. Um, he was probably their best player t- uh, today, as usual. Um, Pascal twenty and six. OG twenty and six. The thing with OG today is he hit his open shot. That's what I noticed. And getting back to that contract, if he's like, I think I feel like the floor to that contract is what he did today: is play good defense and hit the open threes. I've talked about it a thousand times, unless he develops any kind of, um, you know, dribbling skills, um, he's not going to be much of an offensive threat to me. Um, but today, like I said, he scored 20. Uh, the team only scored 93. Um, you were talking about their defense. I think their defense today was a bit better, and that might just be Philly also wasn't firing on all cylinders either. But to limit any NBA team to 100 points these days, I feel it's pretty good. Their offense has been a bit of a joke. Um, the first play of the game when, um, when and Simmons came down, it was a bit of a, like a transition. And, uh, and Pascal called out, it was right after half court, I watched it a few times, he's like, oh, I got him. And Simmons just blew right by him, and, and I was just looking, and I'm like, man, like, if I'm Pascal or anybody on this Raptors team, you're starting off 0-2, your back's against the wall, we know it's early, but you don't want to go 0-3 because you touched on that. Like, it's almost like in the NFL, you go 0-2, 0-3, like the percentage is just starting in your favor, and you're playing 10 games less this year because it's 72 games. And I just didn't see that sense of urgency from from him, like on that specific play. Now the guy bounced back; he had some better things. But and I don't want to say like every play matters in a seventy-two game season. But you know, when you're zero and two, like I feel like every play kind of does matter until you win a game, right? Well, I mean, I'm looking at their I'm looking at their schedule coming up. They, they, I was gonna say I'm it. Go ahead. Yeah. Sacramento's look good. Yeah. But their schedule, again, their schedule isn't the easiest. Of, like, they got Charlotte back, back to back. back, back. Yeah. Miami back to back. Indiana back to back. Like, it's, it's an interesting little schedule they have going. I mean, there, there's wins to be had uh, in the month of January, so they can't get back on track, but like, they need it. Um, they need to be playing better defense. And again, I, I have no idea why. Um, I was looking forward to seeing the rookie. I thought the rookie played a great preseason. I have no idea. I, I don't understand considering that Norm's struggling. That's the thing. I was going to say, I feel like maybe like Nurse, like the only thing I can think of is Nurse really wants to get Norm going and he doesn't want anybody really taking his minutes. But even, I don't have the number in front of me right now, but I want to say, actually, I wrote it down. 17 minutes, six points, shot two for seven. Um, and I saw he had a few threes there. But like, I don't know, like Norm, He's he's been a streaky guy when he's at his best. People say he might be a sixth man of the year. But like, we need more consistency. And I've talked about this a thousand times too. It's like, Unless there's a table setter, like when they had Kawhi and everything, or when even DeMar, when he was here in the regular season, at least you know the guy's going to score 22 points a game. All these guys now with all this pressure, like this is Pascal's first game out of, out of three that I want to say that he's played good offensively. OG, same thing. Kyle shot six for 15, whatever. Like that's not the, not the greatest, but like we said, 24, eight and nine. I like the way that he drove today, drew a lot of defenders, dished it out to some guys and, and um as he, as he got like the Embiid over and also the guy that was guarding him. Fred, again, three for 12, eight points, six assists, six rebounds. Like, you know, you signed that big deal and, and I've been a big Fred guy, but I just, you know, we need, like if, if this team's at least gonna make the playoffs, they need more consistency from all these guys. see some some better situations like Fred at the end of the day three for twelve shooting that that's not that's not great. Almost a triple double. I mean he, he did almost eight six six to six not, not the like most horrific games you can have at the end of the day. But um again guys are like OG shooting seven for eleven with with four threes like him him going for twenty and six five steals. I mean OG was was on a mission today and again there's a not getting 
getting the win in that they simply couldn't close it out in the fourth quarter. Uh, the fourth quarter, they were, they were very stale, making bad shots. Um, they, they had an unfortunate, unfortunate situation that Baines ended up uh, hitting a three when the, and it counted, and then they, they looked at it, and then it was a shot clock violation, which kind of ruined the mojo of what they had going, and they ended up taking away some points there later on. Like, I think it happened a couple minutes later. They, they looked at it and took, took it away from them, which is a weird little scenario. Um, but, but all in all, like I said, I'm not panicking in the sense of these guys are what they are. I don't know what the, the expectations are for a lot of the Raptors fans. If, if you have this belief that, that you believe they're going to go back to the NBA Finals, but I, I, I am not in that line of thinking because the, the East got better and they got worse. And, and that's, uh, that's just the reality. And if you're going to rely on Stanley Johnson to play 20 minutes, a guy that was stable to your bench and got, couldn't get five last year, probably going to have bigger issues than you think. Um, and, and, and that's no slight on Stanley. He played pretty well, but it, it just goes to show you that the depth on the team has gotten much worse. Um, and overall, like they, they're, they're going to need some time to gel some of these new guys. Um, I don't think, you know, Boucher has his moments. Baines has been okay. He hasn't been he hasn't been a Baca in terms of uh, being able to play that in a specific type of way. No, on, on offense, he's been... But I was going to say, Baines on defense for them, like, I think he's been really good on defense. Well, I mean, but it's also, again, even on the, the offensive line side of things, he hasn't been... Like, Serge at times would, would, you know, he hit some hit some big shots and then played that big and roll game pretty well. He's um, not Serge, but, but he's also he's also a better than Mark, right? So he's, he's kind of in between. Like, let's, let's be honest here. I mean, we saw it on Sunday with the, with the 50-point losses. Like, it's all, like, it's just weird all over the place. It is. Like, you have Cavaliers who are 3-0, and and no one expected that. 3-1 and one now, they just lost, yeah. Well, the 3-1, they yeah. lost today. Um, and overall, like, it's just, you know, it's things that you're not expecting that are, that, that are happening. And maybe it's just early season bugs for them, and they're working out. But like I said, as currently constructed, they're not going to do, they're not going to win a championship or even make the finals, in my opinion. Not even the Eastern Conference Finals. I think this is a, a, a team that will can win a, a round, depending on the opponent. But when, when it gets to the nitty gritty of the conference, I, I don't see it. Uh, and that goes with requiring James Harden. James Harden, I, I have this fascination on social media about James Harden. If you deal the entire future for a guy that probably walks next year, um, who knows where he'll end up if he ends up at the brass rail or at Zanzibar uh, <laughs> at the second day. Like, like who the heck knows? It's not a guy that's going to fit in well here. I, I don't understand these people that believe that James Harden, if you give away all the depth, uh, whether it be Pascal or Spread or whatever the heck is, is that is going to make the team better. It's not. It's really not. You're going to have a disgruntled guy that probably doesn't want to be here either. And and then you then you have don't have the complimentary pieces. So then it all relies on him doing everything. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. So overall, it could be a blip, but again, this is this to me. If they absolutely stink this year and they get a high pick, I'm not going to complain one bit. We got they, they got the championship. We got our parade. And again, the Warriors were, were the worst team in the, in the NBA last year. Like you, you could you could revamp off of a year, bring you, you're gonna have Bounce some money. Like you, you, you could bring in a guy that could that'll go along with some of these pieces. You'll have a better. It, it's a it's short it's short term gain for long term gain. That's the, that's the way they should look at it. If they have, being a middling six or seven seed again, getting dropped in the second round, I'm not gonna do you much. Like if you want to go championship or bust, like these are the type of situations that sometimes you gotta occur. The Warriors are probably better off wisely developed into a, into a stud player that they basically uh, now have a, an even better core um, than, than what they had, even like in minus Durant, obviously. They're, they're probably better off to test for the next to compete for even a longer tenure than they would have been, let's say, for example, Durant left and they tried to, to compete and got, and got nailed every, on the second or third or, or the second round, pretty much. That, that's to be their ceiling when, uh, when they, they don't have any. Uh, Tank. We know that this team's not going to tank, especially with the guys they have. Like, I, I don't even know if they're capable of winning a first round series, to be honest, because I don't think they're going to. Oh, no. so what the hell? They, what the hell are they doing? Like, yeah, I guess what? just too much pride on Messiah, right? It's like they're going to they're going to go at least you know half of the season. There's no All Star break this year, from what I know, but 
they're going to go at least a, a little bit until they're like, you know, pretty much completely out of it. And then maybe at that point you see something where they make a trade, trade Kyle, lose some games. Um, but I'm just, I kind of drew up the standings as you were, as you were just talking to them, but like, there's not, there's not that many teams I can look at in the East that are, that we would think are in the playoff picture that you look at and you're like, okay, like Raptors, especially like, I know that they haven't been good so far, but are that much better than we know that Milwaukee and Brooklyn are better than they are. Boston and Miami are like, that's four teams right there. Um, and then you're getting into teams like Philly, um, you know, Indiana. Well, Talented than the Raptors. Yeah. You gotta be honest about it. Yeah. You, you got you got two level. You got two. You, you got some people were like talking about how Pascal and, and Ben were starting to get on a similar level. The, the Raptors don't have a star a, a star guy like Embiid. And in, if in terms of overall talent, the Sixers have more talent than the Raptors. And then that's not even including Tobias Harris, who's been rough, but he's still a guy that overpaid, can, but still a guy that can score. Yeah. A team. You know, they're, they're, they're a sixth place team on talent because, they, like, and this wasn't the case, uh, you know, when Kawhi was here. And, you know, it was, it was a funny thing. I actually read an excerpt from, uh, I think, uh, was Nick Nurse's book today, talking about how Kawhi really changed the way that Nurse thought about the game in terms of, like, how a Nurse wanted guys to get touches on, on every possession. And Kawhi was like, we're not just passing the ball for the sake of passing, man. I'm here to score. And it was, and it was a very interesting because you don't expect that from the robotic Kawhi Leonard. But I'll tell you, they're, they're again, obviously every team would miss Kawhi Leonard. They're missing a lot of these facts, not only about the type of player that he was, but I, I think he's like behind the scenes in practice. I guess I don't know how much practicing he's doing in LA according to reports, but like they're missing a lot of that situation and a lot of this mentality. Um, and I don't know, man. Like I said, we enjoyed the ride a couple of years ago. I always, and again, we, we talked about it on the show. We knew they were in a situation where they were going to have to rebuild or re remodel the team. And it's coming to that situation. If they, for some reason, get off to a horrific, let's say, two and ten start or, or something like that, like they're gonna have to really think about what, what's the choice. Is, is it Kyle's last year? Do you trade Kyle at the, at the deadline? What do you do at, at your Masai? Do you have again? That's a movable contract um, for a contender. And again, do you? I don't know what you do. Would you, would you, do you keep them? Would you let them go? It really depends on how, how they're doing right now. They, they don't look like a team that could be going to be doing much this season. And I, I thought that even before the season started, to be honest. I thought they, like you said, they're a, they're a one or set, first, second round team tops. Yeah. And, and that's basically the gist of it. So, I don't know. It, it'll be interesting how it unfolds. Hopefully, they, they get, uh, I'm assuming they're going to beat the Knicks. If they go over four, then the panic really sets in. That's what I was going to say. Then you really have to hit the panic button if, if this team loses to the Knicks, which I want to say they're close to 500. They beat Cleveland today, and Cleveland was 3 and 0. But, Which again, I mean, and most of the time that would have been you would be expecting to beat that Cleveland team. But like I said, it's been a tip, uh, you know, 2020 for you, a top big three start to the season and the end of the year. The standings are like, like, and, and uh, Milwaukee beat uh, Miami today by like 35 or 40 points when I was kind of looking at that too. I guess not like it matters, but they, they, they got, you know, the bricks beaten off them last year in the playoffs. But you're talking about Kawhi and how much they missed him, not just on the court. And I remember saying this when he was here a year and a half ago, whatever it was, just when I went to the games and I would just see the other team almost like in awe of him just being around. It's probably due to the fact that he doesn't say much either. And there's a bit, a bit of that like mysticism, but guys would just go up and like, and we saw it with Norm and all these guys, like it's almost like they look up and, and they're in awe just of his greatness. And this was before he won the title. And I think that he's one of those rare silent leaders where the guy goes in he puts in his work and guy, he leads by example and guys are kind of motivated where it's like almost like they don't want to let him down and you don't have that anymore. And there's nothing more, there, there's not that, you know, defending the title that season's gone as well. So this team's looking for some motivation and you know, losing the two bigs. We said this at the beginning of, you know, when we did our season preview, that's just something that, you know, Malachi looks like he's going to be a hit for a late pick in the draft, which is amazing. There's not a bus and they've always been great at drafting. But they didn't address it really in free agency. I know they brought in Baines, and he's been, like I said, I think he's been a really good piece for them, especially for what they're paying him defensively. On offense, like I said, he's an upgrade over Gasol and a downgrade from, from Ibaka, but he is what he is. 
I just don't understand how Masai didn't go maybe get us another pick, address this front court issue, unless maybe they're just thinking, we don't think we're going to have that great of a year. Everybody else got better. Let's kind of retool, use our draft pick, and then go from there. But, well, well, remember, like, the, the free agency class wasn't all that great in general. Like, there were, there were a couple of guys that, you know, that they were, they were looked at upon, like, there's a big, I mean, look at the free agency. Well, Harold, it looked like he wanted to come to the Raptors. There was those reports he followed the Raptors on, on Instagram, which was really weird because it was like the only team that he ended up following. Um, and he didn't sign for that much money with the Lakers. Obviously, you're going to the, you know, the title contenders, and there was that beef with the Clippers going to the rival. He just left. But I feel I think that a lot of Raptors fans thought that, the, thought that was a legitimate um, you know, potential I signing. Well. I think they just have too many guards. I think it's really as simple as that, man, because... He's getting eaten alive. You couldn't play him in this matchup. Yeah, but what are you going to do? Foul him the entire game? That's why, like, Len came in because it's just you need guys that have that well, kind of body. Also, He's unplayable. Yeah. Like, you don't think he's like a top, even like seven coach in the league? Not, not top tier. I mean, they had like, uh, I mean, until like to me, it's blasphemous putting putting him ahead of Greg Popovich. Yeah, Matt has been uh, Spurs coach for years and won and won a ton of championships and, and was probably probably the best coach in the NBA for uh, you know barring Phil Jackson. Uh, I, I mean, that to me is blasphemous. You can say that that pops getting old. Uh, pops basically also made. No, I don't think anybody that would say he is is, is, is kind of crazy. But I, I don't, like, how many guys can you name that are better coaches than him, right? It's it, it's Pop, it's uh, Spolstra, 
And, and then after that, how many guys really are you looking at? Like uh, Snyder's a, a pretty solid coach when he's done in Utah. Um, but like how many guys, um, also Boston's coach, drawing a blank, Brad Stevens. Yeah, but he had the right chess pieces in that matchup too, right? Like you had Tyson Chandler, you had a lot of good defenders there. Well, He's a great defensive coach. Money. So did Sam Mitchell, so did Nick Nurse. No, I think. But overall, yeah. um, the Raptors team have a lot to, again, keep a growing pain with, with a lot of the new guys in the, in the lineup. Uh, and again, some matchups early. We'll see how the next game go. But yeah, they got to turn this around quick because if they fall a little bit to a lot of teams, like the Hawks, like it's not going to be a, a, a gimme to make the playoffs. Orlando is undefeated. They're, yeah, they're 3 or 4 0. And that's why we said this in, in the season preview too. Like this is the year COVID, not playing at home, no fans. This is the year where if you don't make the playoffs, I don't think anybody's really that mad. Um, like you, you mentioned earlier, like the Golden State kind of retool thing. Maybe sit some guys out a little bit longer, like they did with Curry. Could have came back, rest some guys, met, manage them. But just lastly, um, we were talking about Malachi, um, and, and I wanted to just kind of speak on. Because the thing is, their guard rotation, their guard hierarchy. So, like, Kyle and Fred, both of them, in terms of tenure and, you know, what you're paying both those guys, those guys are going to average low to mid-30s for sure. You're not going to play them anymore just because of the, the condensed schedule and the back-to-backs. Those guys are going to handle the bulk of your of your minutes at the two guard positions. From there, like, you know that Norm's going to get every possible chance to succeed because I, I'm not sure if he's in the last year of his deal. I think he might be in the second last year of his deal. I remember he signed a four-year 40. Um, so they're going to give him, and obviously he's one of their better scorers as well, right? The guy can dribble, he's capable, it's just his shooting that hasn't been there. From there today, like you said, Terrence Davis, zero minutes. Malachi, zero minutes. Um, so those are the fourth and fifth guards in the rotation. And you, you obviously I would say that Terrence is ahead of Malachi just based on you know tenure with the team and what he's shown all rookie second team last year. Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's going to be tough. Those guys are going to play, but I think it's going to be on those second game of the back-to-backs because there's going to be a lot of those this year. I think every week there's at least one. There's going to be those four games and six nights. That's where you're going to see the depth of this team. And that's when like, there's going to be like, you're talking about upsets and all these, you know, landslide victory games. It's just going to be guys resting. We saw that with Brooklyn, like the second game of a back-to-back KD and Kyrie both out. Exactly. Like, a lot of injuries this year. Know, you never know again. And luckily for Moran, it's only about three or four weeks uh, midway for the year. But you never know what's going to happen there. Opportunities could present themselves where teams will get weakened by injuries. Uh, but overall, like again, even there, like they're, they're, and, and this is the thing, where the team's been struggling with with defense, for example. The, uh, Flynn was, was all defensive last year. He's Player of the year in the conference. Break. Yeah, 
playoff game where they drop a substantial lead and they'll throw him in there. Because again, to me, I, I don't, I don't understand the move. If Terrence Davis is another, another guy, I, I don't like even last year. Uh, you know, going into that Boston series, like he, he could have been a useful guy uh, and, and didn't get any minutes. Same with um with, with Hollis Jefferson. Uh, yeah. Again, it's Nick Nurse's rotations. I don't understand them a lot. And again, he's made better a uh, method to his madness. I don't get it. Um, but again, to me, the kid was massively impressive. Uh, and now he's been been plugged on the bench for three games. So uh, I don't know. I don't. I don't understand. I, I thought he would be. Um, he would be. He would get ten to fifteen minutes uh, and just give uh, guys like Kyle or, or Fred a rest. Um, but yeah, I haven't seen the the, the floor at all. I, I don't get it. Um, what you? Kyle, Kyle, Kyle's Kyle's an old man, man. We have, we have put it into perspective. Kyle's not Kyle's not built to be playing 35, 40 minutes a night uh, at his age. Like you got, you got, you got you guys rest. So I, I don't understand it. But like I said, uh, Nick Nurse seems to think that he has it figured out. We shall see. We're gonna find out with Nick Nurse, and then and then lastly, uh, you want to change um, your positioning for the Raptors this year. I know we, I think we both picked them to finish uh, fifth or sixth. I know it's early, um, three games I'm in. Still, you still think they finish I'm sixth? Still, I'm still taking them to finish sixth because, like I said, this could be so legitimately a bump in the road. Like I said, if I'm wrong about the, the, the prediction and they absolutely end up being a lottery team, I'm perfectly fine with that because, like I said, I would rather try to shoot for the moon than be, uh, you know, a, a, a first round and out situation. Uh, I don't get the understanding. I think every team should be trying to win a championship. Yeah. Um, it just doesn't it doesn't appeal to me uh, whatsoever because again maybe uh, we've all again we've gotten used to being on top of the uh, on top of the uh, food chain now uh, with that with that year a couple of years ago so I mean being uh, you know a, a one and done or, or a two and done doesn't really you know, appeal I'm not I'm not gonna I'm gonna say that I'm like you know out of out of all the NBA teams how many of those teams can actually legitimately have that approach probably you know maybe at uh, half a dozen. That have realistic hopes of actually re- reaching this championship, probably maybe eight. Um, you know, it, it, it's it's not for everybody, but I would rather you know, shoot through that than just be uh, middling in, in you know purgatory, NBA purgatory. But I said uh, they'll finish. They'll probably finish. They'll, they'll make the playoffs. Um, but again, uh, unless something you know some revelations happen over here, they're, they're not going to budge. I was gonna wrap it up for for today. Then um, I, I was gonna say like I think I don't think that they finish six. I just I like what I've seen too much from a few of the teams. Even though Brooklyn's gonna, are they making the playoffs? Yeah, like worst case, I think that playing game. But like I said, wow. Indiana, Indiana, I think is a better squad than they are if health. This is all if healthy, right? Because Indiana's another team that's had Miles Turner, Sabonis, um, Brogdon. These are guys that are hurt a lot. Um, Philly's a better team. Indiana's a better team, I think. And I think that this just comes back to, like I said, if they would have retained even Mark as old as he is, just to give them 15, 20, like, their lack of size, to me, is the biggest problem with this team. Uh, defending bigs, we saw that again today. Baines did a decent job, but just, you know, Embiid, I still think, had like 26 and like 18 or something crazy like that. They just don't have any depth at the forward, at, at the center position. I think that's going to be a big issue for them. Everywhere else, I think, like, they're decent. But I still think hey, Milwaukee's better, Brooklyn's better, Boston's better, Miami's better, and then you get into two teams. Well, I mean, if, you look, if you look at what's going on, I mean, let's say Miami's one and two. Uh, Milwaukee's already got two losses already this year, and it probably took them at least. I, I think they were like eighteen and two. Yeah. Okay, like, but the record though, like, is this something you think you think Milwaukee's not going to finish first or second? But here's the thing, and then you got to think like, like is Orlando going to be able to keep up on, uh, what they're doing? Probably not. Cleveland's not going to. Cleveland, no. Cleveland, no. And then there's like Charlotte, Detroit. Like Orlando, Orlando's schedule, what would like Orlando speak? Let's see here. I mean, they beat Washington twice over, which isn't much. OKC, okay, so okay, basically. Yeah. I, think, I mean, I guess the Miami win was, was a reasonable one. Yeah. Um, but I mean, again, that's basically again, a situation where I only don't keep that up either. I, I think the Raptors will, will, won't end up in a playoff. But like I said, it's. If it ends up happening that way, like it is what it is, but I, I, they're gonna be that bad. I'd rather just tank it and try to get a top five pick. The, the, the draft this year is much better than last year's, especially on top end talent. It, 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 to me, if you're gonna be middling like that, you might as well shoot for the stars and aim for the moon. Yeah, I, I think it's gonna be like I said. It's gonna be tough. It's gonna be tough to 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 battle with a lot of these teams. Like Miami, 
yeah, sure, their record isn't great, but you just you need to look at the rosters really and and depth. They've been really good. Orlando, another team that's solid with young guys. Uh, we've gone through this. Atlanta, I was high on from the beginning. I don't know how great Atlanta will be. They're the highest scoring team in the league from what I saw. They won again. They beat Detroit, but like by nine. I just think it's going to be tough for them, the Raptors. We've noticed uh, it's been a theme in all of their games, all their losses. The fourth quarter is where they've lost all their games. They've had leads in all of them, like you said. And that just comes down to, you know, being able to score, guys being able to isolate, running that pick and roll efficiently, and, and then also the defense in the fourth quarter. And none of those things I mentioned have really been there for the Raptors. So we'll, we'll do another one after the Knicks game. We'll see if we really have to hit the panic button. But until then... Uh, for Igor and Joe, Raptors 0-3, like I said, off that loss to, to Philly 100-93. to And uh, we'll check up with you guys after that next game. Take care. Man, if they lose to the Knicks, we've got a real problem. Well, like I said, I mean, the Knicks, I know, the, the Knicks beat the, the 